Alrighty folks, well here we are. It is my last weekend in Western New York and we are going to fish it hard. You better believe it. Fished a decent amount of time yesterday. I caught was two dink perch out on Quaker Lake. Went to the exact same spot where we caught, we're catching those big pike and jumbo perch last week. Fish just weren't there this week. I don't know, man, it's a hit or miss place. But uh, I'm actually heading back to Quaker Lake right now because uh, I got home and realized I only have four of my five tip-ups. So hopefully my other tip-up is not in the water and I just left it on the ice somewhere. Um, I don't know. But I'm heading out to Chautauqua County to meet up with Benji and Dustin. So Quaker Lake's kind of on my way. And my buddy uh, Chad and his crew are actually going to hit it at sunrise today. So they're probably getting there right about now. So maybe I'll fish with them for an hour or so. Maybe we'll open water fish the spillway. Then the plan is to head out to Chautauqua County. Maybe ice fish Barcelona Harbor. Maybe open water fish Chautauqua Creek. I don't know. We'll see. But we're going to fish hard. Bad news is my dad is taking the fish finder today. He's not driving all the way out to Chautauqua County. He's just going to fish locally. And the fish finder is technically his. So we don't got the flasher today. Good news is we do got the gas auger. Used it yesterday. She ran like a champ. Uh, this thing cost me an entire day on the ice two weeks ago um, because she died on me. Her fuel line um, brought it away somehow. But gas auger is good and running now. Shout out to Randolph Hardware for helping me get that fixed. And uh, yeah, well, it's getting, uh, the sun's coming up as I'm speaking here. So let's get out there. Well, found my tip up. <laughs> of course, nothing set it off. <laughs> this thing was out here all night. Oh boy. This is not going to be fun getting this thing out of here. <laughs> of course, the damn thing was in there all night. Uh, of course, I left it in the freaking ice. And of course, it never went off either. <laughs> we managed to get the tip up out of the ice. Turns out there is something on here. <laughs> I guess that's why it's illegal to uh, leave tip-ups out overnight. It's bad for wildlife. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna cut the line on this little mud puppy and let him go. Friend Chad and his crew. This is probably the largest group I've been on on the ice since college. Let's see, it's just a whole line of vehicles we got up there. So this whole area is pretty well set with tip-ups. Uh, I'm only gonna hang out here for maybe 15 minutes or so, and I'm gonna go meet up with my friends in Chautauqua County. But hoping to get a big trout or your pike on film. It's prime time right now. That sun's coming up. Well, unfortunately, I didn't get any fish on film. I mean, we probably had about 10 guys out there. No flags went off in the half hour that I was down there hanging out with them. Love to stay and party with these guys all day, but we're going to head out to Chautauqua County and meet up with the Chautauqua County crew. Again, it's my last day in Western New York, so I had to meet up with my Cat County friends. Now it's time to go meet up with my Chautauqua County friends and uh, hopefully catch some fish. Maybe I'll take a cast at the spillway on my way out. We'll see. Well, decided to come take a cast below the spillway, because why not? It's my first time open water fishing this year. You know what? Why not? While we're here, might as well fish this spot one last time before I leave western New York, right? And uh, we finally got ourselves a rubber net with some uh, gift cards from Christmas. I know, I know. I should have had a rubber net years ago, but finally got a big rubber net. It's going to be much better for pike and steelhead and stuff. Just don't sell these kinds of things in the, the stores around here. You got to order them. I don't like ordering nets because I don't know what they look like. I don't know if they're going to be big enough or whatever. But I actually ordered this net from Amazon off of uh, Jerry and Max's link. And so uh, that way I can help out a local YouTube channel. And I knew that the net was going to, you know, be something that would work here in Western New York. And I really like this thing. I mean, it wasn't super cheap, but I like the way that the, the handle extends and rotates pretty easy. It doesn't have that clicking thing that those things rust out and break. And, uh, and the rubber is a lot healthier for pike and trout and stuff. So hopefully we can get it into use today. Sounds a fish. What is it? Rainbow. Rainbow. He's too big, I think, to pull up. I'm going to have to run him down. Rain a bow. Had a heavier line, I could probably pull him up, but. Nope. Trying to beach the thing down there. I don't want to let the thing free. <laughs> I want to get him in that spot and have him stay there. Well, we'll test how strong this net here is. <laughs> Whoa! 
Whoa. I don't even need the gnat. Definitely don't need the net. I'm gonna remove a glove and... Look how beautiful this fish is, guys. Pull him out for you real quick. Beautiful rainbow. Not too big, he's about a, I don't know, probably just under 20 inches. All right, let that fish go. Whew. Sweet. That's a decent start. Alright, well, I guess we only had one fish that wanted to play today. So, we're gonna call it quits here. Glad to catch one last fish at the spillway, start the day off with the trout. Shame we didn't get anything on, on the lake, but that's alright. We got a lot more fishing ahead of us today, both open water fishing and ice fishing. Let's head out to Chautauqua County. Alright, finally met up with Dustin, so we are heading out to the Westfield area now. Uh, somehow he managed to fit everything into a Subaru. <laughs> this is just, we got stuff for open water fishing and ice fishing all day and both of us have an absolutely unreasonable amount of fishing equipment. So, somehow this thing, we, we made it. So yeah, we're gonna go meet up with Benji, hopefully catch some big steelies and browns. Well, bad news for our uh, Barcelona ice fishing plan. That is nowhere close to being safe. Definitely not safe. So that was Chautauqua Creek, open water fishing it is. I like it. <laughs> well, we found Benji. Oh, yeah. And uh, the harbor is definitely going to be a no-go today, but maybe we'll fish Chautauqua Lake on the way home if uh, we don't catch anything here. Otherwise, we'll spend the whole day here at the creek. It's a good thing we brought our steelhead stuff with us. We were planning on starting off here anyway, and hopefully we can catch some fish. Icicle City over there. I haven't been getting it on film, but these guys are starting to miss them left and right. So hopefully, we'll get a fish on film here. Alright, spot number two. See if we can catch them. Oh, finally calling it quits at this spot. At least, well, those two fell to fish. We all saw a fish. But, unsuccessful today at catching anything. I'm gonna try a different spot. Well, I don't know about the fishing, but this is pretty insane out here with these giant icebergs. It's a tiny patch of open water there. It might be the only possibility. Alright, well, I'm taking one last cast, and I think we're going to call it quits to this experiment. From the, the harbor over there, I was thinking that this break wall would be like that one. That giant, crazy, ice-bound thingy. Well, that ends this experiment. Alright, well, the ice on the north basin of Chautauqua is finally safe. So we're going to try a little bit of night ice fishing. Um, unfortunately, I don't have my headlamp, so I don't know how great the video is going to come out, but it should come out decent enough. We got glow sticks for our tip-ups, and uh, we're going to be digging for crappy and walleye, and tip-ups are pretty much going to be set for walleye. And uh, hopefully we can catch something. I've never actually had much success on Chautauqua Lake for walleye, but hopefully tonight will be the night. Alright, well, pretty easy. This is how we're going to be able to see our tip-ups after dark. Break these things, get them lit up. They come with these nice strings to tie them on. These things are just a buck at the dollar store. Cool. Rocking and rolling. <laughs> Night tip up is ready to roll. Alright, we finally got a fish. It's been a long, not easy process. You guys have no idea what we've gone through. <laughs> but we got a fish. Hopefully it's a crappie, but I'll be happy with anything at this point. Perch. Alright, I'm happy with anything at this point. We got something. On the board, Taco Lake 2018. <laughs> about time, man. Uh, it's definitely about time. Tip-ups are still out. Kind of looks neat out there with all the glow sticks. Is it one of those little minnows? Yeah. Yeah, it could be anything. Could be a perch or crappie. I don't care, dude. I'm yeah, I, I hear ya. <laughs> I 
I'm just gonna let it sit right here. Maybe I'll see deep then. At the end, we, we should check that one again. Check the others and then see if it goes up and... Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, check that one again. Make sure bait's on it and everything. <laughs> Why is it going up when you do that, though? That doesn't make sense. Well, it's... <laughs> it's definitely you somehow. I just don't understand. I don't understand why it's making it go opposite direction. <laughs> oh, what was that? Okay, well, so much for my bike. Alright, well, we've got one perch and one trout and, I don't know, 10 hours of fishing. We're back today, we're going to completely different spots since yesterday was so poor. Starting off on a different steelhead stream. See if I can catch something at Canada Way Creek. This is my first time here this season. Hopefully we catch something. Uh, I didn't get it on film, just had our first, slightly first close call over the day the ice shelf just gave way as I stepped right there <laughs> oh man it's crazy because my mom and everybody freaks out on me about ice fishing but I tell people steelhead fishing is so much more dangerous than ice fishing like not not even close especially this time of year you got ice jams that break up and stuff this whole place right now as we're fishing this place could like raise 10 feet of water in like two seconds if an ice jam up there that we don't know about breaks not to mention you got falling ice this is just slippery and dangerous just walking around here yeah there's a lot more dangerous than ice fishing but people freak out about ice fishing so see these ice chunks that float down a if you you know step in the wrong spot you can end up going in the water. B, they'll uh, they'll shore up in a place like that, and they'll just form these giant dams, and then those giant dams will eventually melt and break, and uh, that's what causes places like this to flood in a blink of an eye. All right, well, we're officially moving on from this spot. On to the next set of holes. We are now heading into the next spot. Hole down here is where I usually do best anyway, so hopefully we can get ourselves on some steelhead. All right, well, this is uh, what you got to go through to get fish. You lost your minnows. I thought I was going down. You lost your minnows there. Yeah, I have no idea how deep that is. <laughs> like I said, right there you can see that the ice is kind of raised. So you can tell that there's uh, things underneath there. <laughs> Rocks are a log or something. <laughs> Be careful you don't uh, twist your ankle or something. It wants to take you down. This is definitely yep, interesting. Yep, yep. <laughs> <laughs> this is fun. <laughs> Problem is I haven't fished this creek this spring, so I, I don't remember what this looks like from last year. I mean... I kind of remember where the holes are, but it's, you know, last time I was here was last season, and A, it can change in a season, B, I don't remember the fine details, like how deep it is specifically right there. Alright, Dustin's going to try his luck at ice surfing. He is a snowboarder, so he kind of knows what he's doing. <laughs> You're gonna get wet, dude. <laughs> I don't think it quite has the strength to stay afloat and hold you. It's thick enough to not break up. <laughs> Bad news is we're still not catching any fish. Good news is I spy free stuff. It looks like fiber I've used here before. Hey, look, a crayfish. There's all kinds of interesting stuff on the ice over here. He's alive. alive! What? There's like another one there. What? What is going on right now? Oh, man. Do you think they'll use for. Do you think they'd work for steelhead? This one's alive too. Uh, at least for on the ice, maybe. Sweet. All kinds of good stuff. We're calling it quits on this stream. I don't know, man. We've been putting our time in. We've put, gosh, probably 10 hours worth of steelhead fishing now into the last two days. This is typical for me, not catching anything, but now I'm finally with somebody that knows what they're doing, and uh, I still don't catch anything, so 
I guess I just picked bad days to go steelhead fishing. It is a tough time of year. There's not really any fresh steelhead running just because it's January. We did talk to uh, a couple people who said they caught a couple drop backs. And they started off the day on Chautauqua and said they didn't catch anything there, which is why they came here. Our plan now is to go to Chautauqua. <laughs> and that's not a good report. We finally have a fish on. Uh, yeah. I can say I can do that or I can try and grab the fish. Got it. Okay. This is insane. Finally! Man, alright, I didn't even film full well, man show to the spot yet. That is really deep right there, so I'm not gonna go set the rods down on that rock. Ay <laughs> ay ay, this was such a this has been such a struggle. I was just about to film the intro and he hooks up on his first cast. So Alright. Okay. Do you want me to try and grab it? Okay. Right in the mouth. Beautiful. Beautiful. That's what a pretty Beautiful, fish. Man. What a pretty time. fish. It's been time. <laughs> You've been putting in the time. And, uh, Get one on the board here. Look at the lamprey. Oh. Get a shot of this. <laughs> yeah. You can see in the... Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, you can, can see right here, there's a lamprey on him. From Lake Erie. <laughs> they do a lot of damage. There, there was fish. a lamprey on him. Yeah. <laughs> I hear it's not recommended to eat fish that have lamprey. Really? Suction marks on them either. Mm -hmm. yeah. I've actually heard that they're, they still taste fine. But no, no, no. Doesn't look pretty, that's for sure. Here's your forceps. Man. The release of Mr. Steelhead. Big, beautiful male. He has the one lamprey mark, but... Still a pretty fish. You might want to put it in there, yeah. All that worming and freaking squirming he was doing, trying to unhook him. There he goes. Alrighty. And it's off. Nice fish, man. That was... I'm glad I at least got one on film. The drive out here was officially worth it. Alright, now to update you guys on what's going on. So we, <laughs> we switched spots. He hooked that fish on the very first cast. We switched spots. We are now... Uh, back to Chautauqua Creek, uh, where we missed a few fish yesterday. At least we know there's a couple fish in this area, and we're going to try for them. Of course, this time we decided not to bring the net with us, because we've been hauling that net with us everywhere and not catching anything. So we decided, you know what, uh, if we cook a fish down here, we're just going to land it the old-fashioned way, because the net seems to be a curse. And wouldn't you know, uh, we decided correctly. Uh, the net was indeed a curse. So it was a challenge landing that fish, but at least we hooked a fish. Hey folks, I'm messing with a fish right here. No, oh, broke. <laughs> broke off on one. Gosh dang it, I got that on film too. It broke off on him. Oh man. That, yeah, I thought that was definitely a fish. Definitely a fish. <laughs> man, got my bobber back at least. These bobbers aren't cheap. Oh man, alright. I'm just glad I had that action. I, you know. Well, first of all, and I got on camera earlier, I don't even think you know this yet, I almost fell in that exact same spot where you were landing that fish. I went to go set your rod down on that rock, not realizing how deep it was there, and came very close to doing what you just did. Dustin just did what I almost did earlier when he was uh, fighting that fish, and almost <laughs> did fall in right there. Uh, didn't go down all the way, but your jacket's pretty wet now.
In any event, uh, on that note, I think we're going to call it quits. I am once again shut out steelhead fishing. This is the norm for me. So, yeah, steelhead fishing with Cray Outdoors. Two days, 20 hours of fishing, and uh, nothing. I'm going to go try Chautauqua Lake now. Cray Outdoors is a little bit better at ice fishing. Can't say I've seen a hovercraft out nope, on Chautauqua Lake before. We're just deciding if we want to fish Mayville or Prendergast. That thing's neat. I wonder if someone fell through the ice. <laughs> Alright, well we are now back on the ice. Gonna try here, try and Prendergast Point today since Long Point sucked yesterday. Yes, finally! Oh, I'm, I'm recording. Shoot. How long have I been recording for? I think I've been recording since I drilled those holes. This could be a perch. This is that super, super deep one. This is that one that was significantly deeper than the others. So, uh, I actually did have a good feeling. <laughs> finally, baby. Finally. Some action. This could be a perch. It's on a smaller minnow. You said it was spinning? It was, yeah. I just watched it. Whatever it was dropped, it actually don't feel bait on there, unfortunately. It's a good sign. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It was definitely way deeper here than the other tip-ups for some reason, yeah. Hey. Yep. I was not shut out. To, well, mate, can't say that yet. It's not through the hole. I was officially not shut out today. <laughs> we are officially not shut out. Uh, yeah, these, these are, perch are no bigger than the ones in Quaker. A little bit bigger than the last one. Not that's saying much. Nice. Alright, we're, we're catching something. <laughs> There's dink perch here, there could be walleye here. Alright, well, we're finally catching fish, be it dinks. But we are set up. We got this whole area pretty well covered with flags. So, I, I mean, I'm starting to think walleye on Chautauqua Lake are just a myth. But one good thing is I, I didn't really capture it on film last night because it was dark. One thing we did accomplish, even though we had no idea what we were doing and we didn't catch anything, we looked like we knew what we were doing. <laughs> Throughout the night, there was like two different groups that came and started jigging right next to us. We had, well, A, we had the shanty, we had the gas auger, and we had glow sticks on all our tip-ups, and it looked really cool. We had the whole area lit up with the glow sticks. Oh! They're down there. So yeah, people seem to think that we knew what we were doing and started jigging next to us. On our way out, we talked to some people, and they're like, Oh, you're the guys with the tip-ups, what'd you catch on them? And we're like, uh, nothing. <laughs> and they were very surprised, because uh, they seemed to think that we knew what we were doing, but we didn't. And granted, they all had Lexars and Flashers, and they weren't catching anything. Yeah, they, they said the same thing, that yeah, they, they fished that area for years and had no idea why the fish weren't there. So, I guess, I mean, I was going where I was told to go, so, I mean, it's not that we had no idea what we were doing, but... Seemed to be nobody was really catching them last night, so it makes it feel a little bit better. Conditions are definitely better today, but uh, we don't have nearly as much time to work with. We're not going to be out here all night. We're just going to hit the dusk shift. So hopefully some flags go off. Hopefully catch something other than dink perch. Again, it's big crappie was the other thing that we were hoping to maybe catch yesterday, and uh, that didn't happen either, obviously. So They want it jigged every once in a while, and then they want it to sit there. So I, I give them what they want. They want it 100% absolutely motionless. But we're officially calling it quits entirely. Uh, <laughs> look at this. This is how the back of this vehicle has looked all weekend. But we, we gave a heck this weekend, man. We fished all night yesterday, all day today, all day yesterday. I fished all day Friday with Chad. Man, it... For the most part, it sucked, but I got one rainbow trout. You got one nice big steelhead. That's what saved today. Saved the weekend, really. Some dink perch, better than nothing. And everybody we talked to here all said the same thing. It's, in fact, the, the one person we talked to said that uh, we did better than anybody else with four dink perch. So, <laughs> it's just been a slow weekend.